Hello, this is Vern, and in today's video, I'm gonna help you the code or translate seven common phrases that men use to subtly manipulate you as they're getting to know you so you can avoid getting unnecessarily hurt and stop wasting your most valuable asset, your time. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. The first thing I'd like to share is that this video is not an attempt to put down men. And it's not an attempt to say that guys who do this are inherently bad or wrong. The challenging piece of the whole thing is whether the guy's overtly trying to manipulate you or unconsciously manipulating you, you might still get hurt, you might still waste time, you might still end up getting attached to someone who's not good for you and end up suffering far more than you need to. So when I share these phrases with you and you understand them, because you're a smart human being, my intention is that you can internalize them and then share them in the form of a healthy boundary that's set with kindness, but also with firmness, so that he has the option of being more conscious and either stepping up to honor your needs as he gets to know you, or he can step down and connect with someone who has different standards, but either way, not waste your time in the process. Before I share my seven phrases, I'd like to invite you, if you'd like to understand how you can not just internalize this in your mind, but actualize this in a form of transformation, in actions, which is where reality really counts, then you can hit the first link in the description of this video. You will see a page that looks like this. You can enter your name and email and start watching my free masterclass right away. Now, the first phrase that guys will share with you, and this is typically in the context of you ask them what they're looking for in a relationship, uh, you've been dating them for a while and he's not taking action, so you have the talk with them, and the phrase they share with you is, let's just see where this goes. Or something along the lines of, I don't like labels. So whenever a guy says, I don't like labels, or let's just see where this goes, when you're actually wanting a clear form of communication in terms of what his intentions are, what he's really saying is, I have no freaking intention to make a commitment, and I don't care if I waste your time in the process, I'm gonna get my needs met first, and whatever your needs are, I'm sorry, I can't give you an answer right now but let's still hang out and let's still connect and let's see where it goes. Now, I'm not saying that when you ask the question, he should be able to say, I want to make you my girlfriend because you might still be in the process of connecting with him, but he should be able to say what he's looking for, ideally out of a dating situation. And if he doesn't know that, if he's confused, if he's trying to paint it as like, you're being weird because you're demanding this information from me, let's just relax and take this easy. He's really just saying, I don't know what I want, or I know that what I want is not what you want, but if I were to share with you, you'd stop dating me, so let me just hang you on by a thin thread so we can continue exchanging energy and maybe physical contact and enjoy life without commitment. Phrase number two, and this will be typically when you're first getting to know them, there's nothing inherently wrong about it, but when you're first getting to know a guy, it's too early for this kind of situation, and the question is, wanna hang out at my place? Want to watch a movie? <laughs> Let's watch Netflix, right? Why is this inherently challenging or maybe bad for you? Because at the beginning of uh, getting to know him, the safety situation is paramount. You have no idea what this guy is. You have no idea what his habits are. You have no idea if he's really a good guy or a guy who just wants to physically connect with you. But here's what is true. If you connect with them in a closed environment where no one's watching as you're drinking wine and playing Barry White in the background, the likelihood that you'll end up being physical with him significantly, no, exponentially enhances. And the challenge that I have with that is that if you connect with a guy physically too early without knowing if he's good or bad for you and you start getting attached to him, then by the time you recognize that he's bad for you or toxic or downright mean, it's too late and it's more challenging to stop that situation from happening because in your mind you start to rationalize that maybe he's just going through a momentary thing or maybe he, nobody understands him or maybe you're going to save him. You wouldn't necessarily say that to yourself in those words, but there's an egoic part of you that might enjoy being the one woman who changed him and straightened him out or made him connect to his purpose. That's 
like playing therapist. So don't recommend going to hang out at a guy's place when you don't know him. Better response would be, you know what? I love your enthusiasm. And because we're just getting to know each other, here are a couple of places where I feel more happy to connect. And now if he pushes back, then that's a red flag for you. And <laughs> number three, and this would be in the context of getting physical with you earlier than you feel comfortable with or downright wanting to have sex with you before you're ready. And as I said in previous videos, I just restated right now, my recommendation for intimacy at the level of sex would be don't do that until you've vetted the guy enough and you're in an exclusive relationship and it's clear on both sides that that's what's happening. That would be the earliest I would recommend having sex with a guy. So let's say the guy is pushing for that and he starts guilting you and saying things like you're so uptight or you're so insecure, something like that. Those phrases typically mean I want what I want and I don't care about what you need to feel safe. I don't care about the fact that you could get pregnant. I don't care about the fact that you don't know if I have an STD or not. I don't care about the fact that if you get pregnant, you could die at childbirth, <laughs> right? And there's significant reasons why it's riskier for a woman than for a man to have sex, just period, at the end. He's stronger than you physically, most likely. So that might be a situation where if you don't enjoy it and you don't know the guy and he's trying to be forceful, you might not be able to stop him. So there's so many reasons why this might not be the best thing to do early on, but sharing with you that you're uptight or insecure around something that you still don't feel comfortable doing is a way of saying my needs are the needs that are important and I really care about what your needs are right now. Number four, and this happens typically when you connect with someone and he starts following up, something starts to develop, maybe he stops connecting with you, he stops calling you for a few days and then comes back again, like playing hot and cold. And then when it comes down to it and you share in some way that things are shifting or things seem to be shifting, he shares with you that he's too busy to call or too busy to text. Let me play it straight to you right now. It takes five freaking seconds to send a message to say, I'm thinking of you. It takes, what, 30 seconds to call and say, hey, I'm busy today, but I just want you to know that this is what's going on. Now, he doesn't have any obligations to do this, especially if he's not your boyfriend, but don't ever buy the excuse that he's too busy to call. What this really means is I don't have you or a relationship as a high enough priority where I'm willing to do the bare minimum to connect and grow this. And if that's the situation, and it's not something that's just temporary because he got an extra dose of work that week, but that's the way he is, and he really likes to play it as, I'm gonna see you once a week and I'm gonna disconnect forever, and when I come back again, let's catch up from where we were before, that doesn't lead to creating a relationship that's sustainable, that is healthy, that is full of communication. Now, early in the relationship, he's probably gonna text you and connect with you less frequently, but especially as things progress, if he's still one of the guys who's saying he's too busy to call, just understand that he's too busy to date, he's too busy to put you as a priority in his life, and I highly suggest that you find somebody else. Number five, and this is in the context of someone who is constantly texting him, constantly sharing things that are dubious to you, has an aura of sensuality around him, but when you confront him with the situation, he expresses to you that she's just like a sister. She's like a sister to me. And don't get me wrong. I believe that there's definitely situations where a guy can have a relationship with a woman that is purely platonic, that a guy can have a relationship with a woman who's really like a sister, but there's a difference between a sister relationship and an incestuous sister relationship where there's jealousy and there's maybe sexual innuendos and sexual tension and too much texting and too much hugging and coddling. That's an incestuous relationship, if it's a sister relationship, that I highly suggest avoiding. So when a guy says that she's like a sister to me, again, you don't necessarily jump to the conclusion that he's lying, but it's something to be taken with a grain of salt, unless there's specific boundaries that let you know that there's a level of respect and a level of intensity that is far more like a brother and sister versus a lover that's misguided. Number six, I am, and this is a blank state, right? I am controlling, or I am jealous, or I am too strict on this because I've been cheated on, right? Whenever a guy says that he's controlling behavior, his insecurities, are to be deeply understood by you, by you because he's been cheated on before. And instead of saying, yeah, I've been cheated on before and I'm working on this and I own this, he's like, well, because I've been cheated on, you have to change your behavior, you have to dress differently because uh, I'm insecure. So 
Again, whenever a guy says this, he's basically just saying, I am not willing to work on myself, therefore you should change your way of being and reduce your brightness and reduce your ex light in the world so that I don't feel less of a man. <laughs> number seven. By the way, this number seven is something that back in the day was an actual phrase. Nowadays, I mean, if you fall for this, <laughs> there's deeper issues that we need to talk about, but this is a metaphor, right? And the metaphor is back in the day, if a guy wanted to have sex with a woman and she was too shy to have sex, then he would say, well, let's not have sex. It's just a tip, right? It's just a tip. It's a metaphor for a Russian roulette type of experience that is going to get you into trouble and you know it, but it seems innocent and it seems plain and simple. So it's just a tip metaphorically means that you feel like you can travel with a guy that weekend and not have sex with him. It's going to be very unlikely that, that happens, especially if you share a room or that you're going to spend lots of time with a guy who has this type of bad boy energy and you're not going to fall for him, that it's just going to be fun. Maybe just a tip for you is that you tell yourself that the guy is just a friend with benefits and that you're connecting with him so long as you don't find your real guy. And guess what happens? You lose your hunger to go for what you really want. But whenever you feel like lonely, whenever you feel like there's no man in your life, you can call on him, have some level of intimacy that medicates your pain enough to where you lose your hunger to get what you really want. So playing just a tip is a metaphor for what not to do. It's better for you to recognize the truth of what you're saying and become as honest as possible with yourself so that you can have the integrity of asking the same thing in return instead of having a double standard. Hope this is helpful and useful to you. If it is, I'd like for you to do one thing. Go to the first link in the description of this video, click on that link so you can start watching my free training that shares how you can embody these changes instead of just in your mind, with your body and with your heart. If you like this video, please click like or thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out and even share a comment. Let me know what's the biggest one of this that you feel can make a difference in your life going forward. And last but not least, and I'm talking to you if you're still watching me right now, if you've been attempting to create the relationship that you've been dreaming about and you've been doing everything under the sun, therapy, shamanic cleanses, law of attraction, reading books, watching videos, and nothing is changing it for you, you might highly benefit from specific insight hand-holding and accountability. If you feel that might be you and you want to see if we might be a match to work together, second link on the description will allow you to connect with me and find out if we, if I can help you to get this result in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your home. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.